I found that they brought more to the table and there are multitaskers could do five or six things at once, including raising their kids at home. The Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge. All right, it's International Women's Day and one of my favorite women in the world is here right now. It's Barbara Corcoran. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Shark. thank you. Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank. But you say that not, to all the girls. She's yeah. like a family now. She doesn't really count as a guest anymore. She you know? doesn't. <laughs> really. But she's amazing. And thank you for coming in, by the way. My pleasure. I feel like we have so many things to talk to you about that specifically affect women, not to bore the guys, but I think that ladies need to hear a lot of advice about business yes, and getting into your business and some advice that you might have. So it's I feel also like that's nice to get go. the acknowledgement of women in business. You know, that doesn't happen so often. Yeah. So International Women's Day is important to bring people aware of it. What about people that don't have money? Like I, I was thinking before, some people that listen to us have nothing to invest, like, but they want to do a little something. Do you have advice for those kind of ladies? Well, to any woman who really wants to take control of her life and make money, I'm just a believer you have to start a business. I don't believe in working for anybody if there's <laughs> any way you could work for yourself. And most people who start businesses surprisingly don't have any money. They usually run it on a credit card for the first year, sometimes two years of their life. They don't get the same kind of credit investors that men get, and they make it somehow. In fact, they've almost doubled the number of businesses started by women wow. successfully, not just starting, but making a go of it. Do you favor women at all? Do you I do, and I'll, let okay. me give you a solid reasons why. It's not <laughs> yes. because I'm biased toward women <laughs> okay. and think uh, I just want to be with girls, because I have as many male-owned businesses that I've invested in as women. 130 but, from Shark Tank, right? Hundred. Well, a little more than that now. Yeah. I lost, okay. lost track. You know, I just count the ones that are profitable. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Which, do you have okay. a favorite? Do you have a favorite? I do. I have uh, three cousins that operate a Christmas ornament business. As wacky as it sounds, you'd think there'd be no space for anything like that, but but it's oversized balls that people put outside the houses. I don't do it, but a lot of people <laughs> in America like to do that kind of thing. And boy, do they operate well. But back to your question. Yes. Women are more able than men. I hate to say it, but I, I have seen it. I built my business with women. I had almost 700 women working for me before a man would dare set their foot into the Corcoran group. And women joined hands together. Uh, they were on each other's sides. They were not catty, which was always the attitude of people toward too many women in a room that catty. Mm -hmm. I did not find that to be true. I found they were less territorial. I found that they brought more to the table, and they were multitaskers, could do five or six things at once, including raising their kids at home, because most of them had families at home. So women are so underrated as workers, but they're making up for it because they've doubled the number of businesses they've built. See, I like the fact that she said, you know, they weren't catty to each other, the women. Because we were, we did a panel the other day, and mm -hmm. that's one of the things I brought up, that working here, I feel lucky because I feel like most of the women that I've encountered here, we support each other. We pick each other up. We're not jealous. We are not catty. We are, like, you know, we are, we love when the other one succeeds. And also, women are more empathetic. I, mm -hmm. I don't want to say that. I guess I do want to say that. Women are more empathetic. When a woman is supporting you versus a man supporting you, you're feeling her energy and her support of you psychic, psychically, which is a great confidence builder. It gets you to go forward, whereas men will say, yeah, I get it, I get it. Would You want different hours or whatever. Uh, that's different than empathy. Empathy is a big driver of anybody, men, women, because if they feel understood, people put out their best work. Absolutely. And by the way, I feel like we just brought you in here and it was a tornado and a whirlwind. If you miss it, it's Barbara Corcoran, shark from Shark Tank, creator of the Bar of the Corcoran Group. Of course. Which Founder. Which is amazing. <laughs> and, Seems oh, like a million years ago. <laughs> well, it's uh, everywhere I go and I see something for sale, it says the Corcoran Group on it. I'm well, like, not everywhere. I, I wish it no, was everywhere, the case. everywhere, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> I everywhere. think you exaggerate. I, Wait, do you Jersey still have, City and Hoboken? <laughs> do you still have BarbaraInYourPocket.com? I certainly do, and I it's my favorite business of all because you know why I really get to help people one-on-one. -on -one. I get a group of like-minded souls who are all struggling with the same damn stuff when you start a business. You start a business, they have the same problems in year one, two, and three, and what I'm able to do is warn them about what it is and have a strategy for dealing with everything that they encounter. You know, people talk about, mostly because of Shark Tank, that it's easy to start a business if I have the right idea. It's not really the truth. The hard part is building the business, not coming up yeah. with the idea. And with Barbara in Your Pocket, what I do there is I feel like I'm there to give people the answers as they hit the walls. And hitting the walls can knock a lot of people out of the business that should really stay with it. But I feel like I play a valuable role in the building the business, kind of like an extension of Shark Tank. What are some of the 
common walls that people hit because I started a business and I know the walls I'm hitting but I don't know if that's what everyone else probably the best the worst walls is in year one it's making yourself feel as you you deserve the success you deserve to be rich you deserve to change your life Mm -hmm. not even whether you're you're judging yourself as am I capable but do I deserve it it's a guilt thing that hits women more than men why I'll never know that's always in year one getting people over the obstacle of those lousy tapes in your head that tell you maybe you shouldn't have tried so hard you shouldn't be in a circumstance you shouldn't have asked for this shouldn't have as you fail versus taking the position that I deserve this I deserve this and I fail so who cares I'm gonna deserve it and try again you know so that's number one in year one almost everybody encounters that men and women but women encounter it more than men for sure in the second year, the thing that happens is you realize you have your business is starting to move, but you don't have the cash to support it. You can't go to investors to get the cash. Women only get 2% of all the cash out there. Men get 98%. Wow. Not fair. That's but back change. to women, find a way to bootstrap your business, borrowing, begging, stealing, stretching out your cash flow. There's a million ways you could get through year two. And in year three, the same old thing happens to everybody. They hire the wrong person. They need help. And they think they, if they hire an extension of themselves, it's going to work but what they really need to do is hire the opposite of themselves to shore up the company on the skills it doesn't have Mm. so these are commonalities but there's so much nuance that you know so much nuance even on your personality a lot of people have a very great capability to convince people to their way of thinking but they're afraid to ask for an order I was put out of business on a flower business I had when I was in college because I couldn't ask for the money that was my fault. I couldn't say you owe me two years of money for the flower delivery. Let me have it. I couldn't ask for it. And I went out of business quietly because I just didn't have that aggressiveness in me to do that kind of thing. So everybody's going to learn these skills along the way. But what I what I like to do on Barb and My Pot is reassure people, yeah, you're on the right path. Yeah, that's exactly what you should do because they just need to hear it from somebody. That's all it is. And do you tell them when they're not on the right path if you see a oh, big red I'm flag? Oh, I'm good at that. Okay. <laughs> now she, wait, now yeah. she's got the balls to do that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, Elvis Duran is sitting right here, right now. <laughs> I've just never quiet. seen, you know I've never seen Elvis quiet. I, I wanted dying. to say something. You well, get I, the I don't day want, off, sir. Because I'm, I'm telling you, everything that has happened so far has been magic. I mean... I mean, Without Barbara, you, Elvis, I doubt that. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no you, you guys are doing a great job. It, but Barbara, you know, please. Please, you, please, you please. You really are brilliant. I Not mean, brilliant, brilliant, just hardworking, my dear. And even though this is, you know, International Women's Day, we're celebrating. The guys listening right now, we're, we're gaining it <laughs> yeah. as well right now. This Good. is This is perfect. I love that. I have been lodging complaints about International Women's Day. Why is that? Because, let me tell you what these guys do. They're like, oh, we want to honor you by making you work more. Oh, my and gosh. And they get to sit back and take the day off and just enjoy it. And I see what they did there. It's kind of genius, but and, we're not having And meanwhile, how are the any. kids at home, darling? I don't have any. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, yeah. It's the crazy. other job that you have that gets no respect, the idea of running yeah. a household, raising mm-hmm. children, making a husband happy trying to make ends meet especially if you have very little means to make things meet come on I mean women are doing two jobs no matter what you say and yet despite that they've doubled the number of businesses how much started. do you think how much do you think if a, if a mom was to get paid for what she does at home running the household taking care of the kids doing all that what do you think that is worth in New York City it's worth a hundred thousand dollars in the suburbs it's worth sixty thousand dollars wow. that's how I think wow. so but I do they getting... get paid anything no. no what's for dinner honey I came more. home the other night <laughs> working a 12-hour day and walked in the door at eight o'clock at night and who did I hear my husband What's for dinner? <laughs> Did you say reservation? I almost jumped on him and killed him. <laughs> okay, but what was for dinner? Nothing. Okay. That's oh what. That was my response. Nothing. Wait, do you cook? Of course I'm a cook, but at 8 o'clock at night, do I want to cook? No. Do I even want to take frozen food out? No. no. I wanted to throw the food. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question then, and this is for the guys, but I would like to hear Barbara's answer. What is the best way your partner can support you if you are venturing into a business and you need something? Belief. Belief that you can do it. 
constantly reassuring you you could do it because there's so much doubt in the early days. You just need to have somebody in your corner. You don't need a lot of people to believe in you in life, but you need one person. If the husband can't give it to you, how about your mom? How about your sister? But you do need one person believing you without asking questions in your corner. I had that person, which was my mother. Without her, I would have never succeeded in business. She gave me the faith to think that I was good, even though I was a stupid student. She constantly told me I was a genius and I had a great imagination. Without her in my corner, I could have never succeeded. Most of the entrepreneurs I invested on Shark Tank have a fault line. They have something that went wrong when they were kids. Those are my best entrepreneurs. Those are the ones I make the most money with that I bet on because they had one person in their corner that believed in them and that made the difference in their life. You when, don't need a lot. When somebody starts a business, mm -hmm. right? And say it's not going as well as they wanted to, because we all know year mm -hmm. one you don't like make a lot of money, you probably lose money. Mm -hmm. How long should they give it before they like throw in the towel? Until they get up in the morning and say, "I don't feel like going in. I've lost my energy. You're never going to succeed." I think you have to, as long as your energy is up, you've got to go into that business and keep growing it. And uh, most people will regurgitate their energy all the time just to take care of the business. And women interestingly enough see those businesses as their babies oh absolutely they would kill for their babies yeah. men will let go sooner to a business for a business that's not doing well as a woman will it's a fault line too because very often they hold on too long but boy are they loyal to their business I actually think that's that's so important and such a great concept because we were talking about this the other day men seem to know when to cut the ties and move on whereas well, women they're less seem emotionally to involved yeah they, they, you have a little more guilt, like, oh, I could see this through. If only I could change this, whether it's a business or a person, like a boyfriend. <laughs> Guys are out when they're out, whereas women stick around and waste a little bit more time trying to fix things that are broken. Yes, true. You have to almost end things at the right time. You have to know when to give up. Uh, yeah, they're very different. Men and women are very different, really. But I'll tell you what, when you said... It's time to get out when you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, I don't feel like going. I saw Elvis perk up over there, <laughs> and I don't like it. Don't get any ideas, What did Duran. that mean, Elvis? <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. I love coming in every day. <laughs> you act like you do, and I believe you. I think your whole audience believes you. Well, I'm very passionate about coming in and work with, working with the people I work with. Yeah, your it's team the is getting everything. up out of bed that's the hard yeah, part. Yeah, <laughs> after crying in the shower every morning. <laughs> no, but to be able to come in here and sit, at the table with Danielle and Gandhi and everyone on the show, it's... Yeah, and almost... then you have rotating guests, which keep it interesting. You have to be one of the luckiest guys in the world to oh, have that energy that. every day. And I'll, oh, yeah. and I'll admit it to heavens above and beyond. May I go back to something you asked earlier? Please. You're talking about the support. What do you need in a partner to keep you on track? And you were saying belief. Yes. I also say respect. Yes, of course. And listen. Boy, again, to empathy. Like understanding you know, what you're going through. Exactly. So if Barbara and I are married and she's at... at oh, I like that idea. And she's at, and she's at <laughs> You'll the You'll have office. to leave Alex first. I okay. refuse to be a threesome. You can make it a threesome. She's been at the office working her ass off all day and she comes home at, at night and she's like, I don't know, I don't know. I need to hear her say that yeah. because that's my turn to go, you do know, you do know you're on the right track. Just exact, a rough day. You've had a rough day, but you're exactly where you need to be in this process. And I admire you. you. I'm cheering you on the way. You Come on, a belief. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you need in a partner. Wait, can we talk about empathy for a minute? Because th I love the story about how you say your brother is the one that taught you empathy because you were in a store. I want you to tell the story oh, about yeah. you being in the store and what happened. You know, I'm not a very patient person. I like to move ahead, see people move ahead, and that is, that is something I, I'm not so very good at. And one of the worst uh, forms of that is when I'm – in a store, well, this particular, I was in a store and the clerk wasn't acknowledging me, wasn't waiting on me. She, she seemed lazy about what she was doing and I was ready to choke her. It's actually how I, <laughs> inside my body, you know, yeah. like smiling, but inside I wanted to choke her. And my brother read my face and held up his hand and he said, listen, Barbara, consider she's doing the best she can. Stop me cold. Never thought of that. He said, you don't know what she left in the morning. You don't know what she has on her plate. It's not just she's not waiting on you, you know? And he got me to look at people differently, and I have never had that anger in my chest again. And you meet very incapable people doing jobs that they're not enthusiastic about and not doing enough. But now I start to think, hmm, maybe it's the best they can. And you know what? Most people do want to do the best they can. Very few people go to work thinking, let me do a lousy job today, <laughs> you know? They just don't bring the oh, energy wait, Elvis, to the table. Maybe sometimes. <laughs> oh, I doubt that. I can't Why imagine a single day like that. Some of our 
lousiest shows are the funniest That ones. is true. Yeah. <laughs> when Elvis comes in a little tipsy, sometimes those are the he best shows. He comes in tipsy? Every now and then. In the morning? Every now and yes. then. Yes. It's, well, it's, wow. it's been sad. <laughs> It's been six. <laughs> it's been and, six days. And technically, <laughs> technically, it's not the morning, Barbara. He just it's continuation. Yeah, so. I don't know him as a big drinker. I think you're mistaken. Mm-hmm. Really? Well, he's Do I right not now. know this man? <laughs> I've had a cocktail on festive occasions. I felt for sure you were a prune man. <laughs> prune juice. Prune juice in the morning. Oh my god. Oh no. Shots. Wait, you know, I was waiting for the shots to be fired, and I knew they would come for Elvis and not us. So I like this. Go for it. <laughs> oh, she's shooting her shots at me all the time, all the time. and I love it. The day Barbara start, stops shooting her shots at me, I will be very curious as to what I did hey, to listen, deserve. In my family, we had ten kids, and the way we expressed affection, including my parents, was to make fun of each other. It's called acceptance. Mm-hmm. You start making. It's a little rough at times, I guess, but it means acceptance, Elvis. Yep. Acceptance. Amen, sister. I say it all the time. One of my love languages is light bullying. <laughs> if I am light bullying, that's you, not part of the chart. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I nothing you and I'm nice to you, there's something bad going on. Over I've there. never heard of light bullying. I think I'm going to steal that. Just light. Oh, yeah, you know, you don't wanna... I kind of do it. <laughs> you totally do it. Yeah. No, totally and I do love it. that. <laughs> but we love that about you. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, can I ask one more business question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on Instagram, I noticed a lot of pop-ups like, hey, sign up for this on Amazon and review their items and make lots of money or sign up for this and, you know, we'll send you product at home and you can make this much money at home. Is that real or is that a bunch of BS? You know what it does? It answers a need that many people have to get started. It's somebody saying what you should get started. Uh, let me give you a hand. Get out of the gate. You could get started. But I'm telling you, 99% of it is just a start and doesn't really go anywhere. Okay. Yeah, especially when they're asking for money. All right. So let's talk about <laughs> this next season of Shark Tank. Mm-hmm. There's going to be some changes. There are going to be some changes. Uh, big change with losing Mark Cuban. But he's with us for another year. Okay. A lot of people think he's leaving right away. He's with us for another year. Why is he leaving? Is he running for president? Uh, well, no. He's, <laughs> I spoke to his wife when all those rumors were there. I said, is Mark running for president? She said, no. And I believed her. Yeah, right? <laughs> so I don't think that's ever going to happen. You know, Mark expressed to me the biggest obstacle to running for president in his mind is his kids would have have security people around them for the rest of their life. Yeah. He didn't want that for his family. And who would want it for their family? I didn't even realize that was the case. But he said, no, nah, it wouldn't be good for my family. But the real reason is his wife doesn't want it. Oh. <laughs> and that counts. Yeah. Wouldn't be good for the family. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mad. So what are what are some of the changes that we're going to see on the? Well, we're going to see a rotation of many more guest sharks. What oh. they're really doing with the guest sharks, I'm sure the guest sharks know it too, is they're interviewing for Mark's seat. Ooh. Oh, really? That's a big seat to fill. You know, we were in the office yesterday and made a list of like I guess 40, 50 names that we were. I wanted to send to my producer there saying, have you really considered all these people? Because that's a hard seat to fill. I think we came up, I can't remember who the names are now, but I think we came up with five potential names that might replace him. Wow. Uh, wait, don't tell Mark. He'll think his body's not even warm and looking to replace him, right? <laughs> Is he going to have any say in that? Oh, he has no say in that. Okay. You know? wow. when, you're, when you're going out, it's like firing somebody or somebody quitting. Is anybody going to listen to you? No, no. it's over. Mm. Now, is there Watch anyone yourself. else you'd like to get rid of on Shark Tank? If you had a choice, <laughs> any of wow. the sharks you'd like to say, yeah, we don't need yes, you anymore. Danielle. Come on. <laughs> I'm not answering that question. <laughs> oh! <laughs> but well, we know well. there's an answer. There is an answer. <laughs> Let us guess. Let us guess. <laughs> You'll have to tune in for the season to yeah, see yeah, how yeah. you guys interact, and then we'll all make guesses. Oh, no. I'm always polite and lovely to everybody. <laughs> you won't be able to read me. Wait, behind the scenes, does everyone get along? Everyone gets along, especially when we drink at the end of the day. Okay, it kind good. of soothes everything over. <laughs> you know, we have a lot of infighting uh, on the show during the day because we're stealing from each other. Right. Think about that. We all have money. We want to buy the same businesses, and somebody wins and most people lose. So that's not a good dynamic. But we do have a dysfunctional family. It's just like any other dysfunctional family. You know, Mark is a big guy. He's a big brother. Um, <laughs> of course, Robert is always trying to measure up. Oh, can I be like your friend? Can I be like your friend? <laughs> And Lori is the one who says, let's play nice, let's play nice, but she takes all the chips, so that's not very nice at all. <laughs> Damon is everybody's sweetheart, because Damon has a filthy, funny sense of humor, and he's always there to make us laugh. And then, of course, I'm the most intelligent person, so everybody needs <laughs> Obviously. And I'm glad that you were Or at least that. the prettiest. Or at least I think I dress the best, thanks to Tommy Rivero. He's always dressing me nice. <laughs> all of you, everyone complimented your suit when you walked yeah. in. Yes, Every you're right. Person. If I had to pick out my own clothes, you wouldn't even notice me in the room <laughs> i don't believe you wow. yes 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 it's no. true do you notice the big difference between the men and the women when it comes to how you have
have to appear on TV. It seems like the guys just give me a suit and I'm done. And now women have to have these stylists, hair, makeup, all of the stuff. It takes so much more time. I'm up at five o'clock in the morning after I work out for a half hour. I go to the show. I'm at five o'clock. Takes two two and a half hours for makeup and hair. Wow. The men saunter in about a half hour before I hit the set. It's like that's no fair. I'm working an extra three hour a day and I'm not getting paid. <laughs> I think we need to start being a lot more judgmental toward men. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, women without makeup on the show. It's just any show. They're not going to look good. What about good. Pamela no. Anderson? You see, Pamela Anderson's new thing is she doesn't wear any makeup. I don't she believe looks, her. She look. It, it looks like she really doesn't wear a lot really? of makeup. Really, I don't believe her. a simple base like maybe to even out her skin tone. Maybe, but she I want to be in that room. Oh well, if I had her face, I'd yeah. wear no makeup. Come on, <laughs> that's like cheating. Like God bestowing you with a gift that nobody else got. <laughs> I see his hands and I see his thumbs twitching, no. and actually, I know what that means. I'm a total fan. I wish I was in the car in traffic listening to this I was, so I'd be stuck there so I could hear the whole thing oh. so this is this is great this is the three of you together are really 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 working well this is your last day Elvis yeah we forgot <laughs> to tell you <laughs> oh god I wish it was yesterday <laughs> why did I come as much as you like your job bye bye see ya <laughs> you think I'd have a problem with that yeah, I don't. think you would. No, I don't. I wouldn't. I'd have a don't problem. With it. You know what they say? I'm worth more dead than alive. Stop it! <laughs> a million people would cry. Oh, immediately. I'd, I'd be sad. So stick yes. around, please. Thank you. So back to her, uh, her stylist Tommy, who's also a very good friend of hers. Okay. Yeah. Do you, you have, have to time? be friends with a stylist? Yeah, he's in your face all the yeah. time. Do you know how, how many That's times true. she tries to get him to date my husband Alex? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> and he's married. He's, he's better married. looking than you. Oh. <laughs> There it goes. And Alex I'm is a hunk. Is. I know, I know. No, they they're look both cute men. together. They have great children. Well, obviously Alex <laughs> saw something in me. Avi, a lot in you. Yeah. I'm not blaming him at all for choosing you. <laughs> Does you Tommy style well. anybody else, or are you his exclusive? No, he does other people, but he never mentions the name, so I feel I'm his exclusive. <laughs> That's what a woman wants. That's right. How was Saturday Night Live? You popped it, up on that, and I was of, like, Bark. It was a blast. Yeah? It was a blast for the whole office. We were just on retreat in the Bahamas the week before, and I said, I want to work less and do bigger media appearances, and we put on the list the, the key media appearances. We put Saturday Night Live number one. And would you believe within a day we got a call from Saturday Night Live? Wow. I think it's I think there's something in the universe that if you get dedicated to something it comes your way sometimes. I gotta believe in that. It's happened too often in my life. But being on Saturday Night Live, what a well oiled machine yeah. to see the behind the scenes. And I was at the staff meeting with the producer who was a genius, I believe. And he ripped the show apart, totally top to bottom after the first dress rehearsal. And his way of cheerleading his people, he said, I understand there's a show somewhere here. I haven't seen it. Make it happen. Whoa. Wow. Was that Lauren Michaels? Yes, Lauren yeah. Michaels. He's what a wow. genius. Oh, my genius. God. But he, but even though he said that, everybody was looking at him with love in their eyes like they'd do anything for him. And the minute he left the stage, everybody scattered and do, did their job, and the show was twice as good. Well, he is the Barbara Corcoran of TV, without a doubt. Oh, my. I, should, I, I could be as brilliant as him. I wish on a good day. Come on. He's a brilliant guy. Is everybody nice behind the scenes? Everybody was. Everybody made you feel like you were a guest that they couldn't wait to see. And I kept thinking, what are they smoking dope or something? Why are they so happy to see me? But they were sincere, and Aww. they welcomed my whole staff. We went to the after party, and I outlasted Mick Jagger. He left at two in the morning. I left at two o five. Good for you. <laughs> All right, so as we wrap up with Barbara Corcoran, our favorite shark from Shark Tank, on International Women's Day, is there any general piece of advice that you would like to leave for our ladies before we get out of here? Yeah, before buy real here, estate. I, I can't not, <laughs> can't <laughs> ignore my territory. Buy real estate. Beg, borrow, steal, do what you have to, but get control of your life with real estate. It's, it becomes an instant cash machine that you actually over time have a, a place in this world and can retire with. I mean, just buy real estate. I always say that. I just bought a deal yesterday in Baltimore. And let me tell you something. I got such a good price on the property. It had six units in it. And why it was so important is I didn't ever think they would have accepted my price. But there's so much uncertainty in the market right now. They bit and I got the deal. I'm so happy. I even wanted a drink last night, but I was too tired after all the negotiations. <laughs> well, okay. I let it go. Now, how much work do you have to put into it, though? Do you have to put in a lot of work? Into oh, it? I don't mind the work. It's getting the deal. It's getting the deal at the right numbers that makes all the difference in real estate, which is hard to do. But when there's uncertainty, there's always somebody that has to sell. There's always a deal. Yeah. Always a deal. 
So you're saying buy now, despite interest rates, despite what people are saying about the market, do it. Of Don't course, wait. because, you know, interest rates are going to come down probably another point by the end of the year. You could always refinance it. You know what a lot of the mortgage brokers are doing now? If you finance through a mortgage broker, which is 99% of the population, you can say to the mortgage broker, don't charge me again when I refinance. And they're all saying, yes, I should say to you, ask your mortgage broker for no charge for a second refinancing. Good to know. I never would have They're hungry that. for business. Thanks, Barbara. My we pleasure. need a Barbara in our pocket. Oh, that's Barbara in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, Danielle. Hop, Hop on in. Hop on in. I got a pocket in. here. <laughs> Elvis, anything? No, that was perfect. <laughs> okay. No. I love it. Let's clap for Elvis, Yay. a man of few words. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of, the, of this interview. <laughs> I've been counting your words, Elvis. You've actually said only 37 words. I know. <laughs> a record. They're, they're, worth, they're worth more than the hundreds of words I usually use. <laughs> so there's that. The Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge.